Hi there. In another tutorial I've shown you how to normalize data where you've recorded data perhaps from a time course experiment or an experiment where you've been um, administering a drug in incremental doses, in which case you always have a baseline recording from which to normalize your data. The data set I'm using here on the screen in this uh, orange box is in fact exactly the same data set I used in the previous normalization example. However, on this occasion I'm using these same numbers to represent a different kind of experiment. This experiment is carried out, for instance, in a cell culture lab where we've you had a, an n number of seven, so we've done seven different experiments, and in each case we've incubated our cells with different drugs. So, for instance, we've done a control incubation where we've incubated seven dishes with nothing at all, just media, and we've recorded a readout. In this case, we've got the same numbers we had in the previous one. Then we've got another seven dishes and we've incubated them with drug A and we've done another readout. Then we've used drug B, drug C, drug D, drug E and got another seven readouts for each one. I've plotted these data here in a bar graph and we have to plot these as a bar graph because they are independent experiments. The same cells were not used for our control dish as they were for our drug A. They may have been clones of those cells, but they were not the same cells. So drug A's experiment may not have happened after drug control or before drug B. They were done independently, and they're plotted here to show that they are independent. To normalize these data, unlike our previous normalization, we can't normalize all of A to its control. We can't normalize all of B to its control because they are no way related to each other. They're merely just numbered in this order. And we might have read this plate before this plate or vice versa. It makes no difference. So we cannot normalize to each of these individual values. However, what we can do is we can normalize to the mean of all of our control values to create our new normalized data set. So down here in the green section, we've got our normalized data samples. And I've highlighted the blue, which is going to be our mean. So what we can do is we can click in the first cell and we can tell that that this is our data point, our 19.2 data point, but this time it's going to be divided by the mean of all of the data points, in which case it is $j$5. So we'll type that in and then we'll multiply that by 100 to get a percentage. And you can see that in fact sample number A is 19.2 which is higher than 15.7 therefore is 122 percent of baseline however if I now click on this little dot on the right hand side and drag this across all of our control values our mean percentage is in fact 100 because it's a 15.7 average normalized to itself which is correct I can now click on this black dot and I can drag down all the way through to drug E and each of these cells now as you can see up in the top here dollar J dollar five which is our mean value dollar J dollar five so each of these bars on our right hand side now show mean normalized data now that we've normalized all of these data you can see that the graph on the lower right here looks almost identical to the graph on the upper right the only difference being that this scale now instead of going from 0 to 30 units goes from 0 to 180 percent of control or control of baseline so you can see that in this circumstance normalizing all of our data to a mean of our control has shown no benefit in the ability to discriminate between data sets. Okay, so here's a slightly different data set to try and explain how this kind of normalization actually works. We've got the same experiment repeated twice. So on the first repeat we did an n of 4, sub samples a through to d, and on the second repeat we did samples e through to g. And you can see here in the control treatment samples a, b, c, and d have 19, 19, 18, and 17 as their data points. But in the repeat of this experiment, maybe done a week later or two weeks later, we had a, a different series of numbers. We had 48, 52, and 54. This doesn't mean these numbers are wrong. It just means that our baseline has moved between experiments. And this is reflected in the very large 
standard deviation shown in our data set. Our mean of all of these experiments is 33, but our standard deviation, of course, is 17, because it's very high deviation because of this increase in the baseline. So what we can do with our normalization is we can normalize A, B, C, and D to their own mean. And you can see what I've done in the formula up here is that C5, which is this cell, is this one here, sorry, this is C19. The value is C5, which is the control for A, divided by the average of $C$5 to $F$5. And $C$5 to $F$5 is this range up here from A through to sample D. And then I've applied that formula to all of the cells in this area of my data set, normalizing these data to the mean of the first set of controls. And then what I've done is I've repeated that normalization, so I've then normalized the second experiment, E through to G, to the average of E through to G in our raw data. So what we can do here is normalize the two different experiments on the two different days to their own internal controls. This is the reason we do a control treatment every time we do a cell culture experiment or every time we do a human study or an animal study, is to make sure that our baseline hasn't shifted. In this case, the baseline has shifted. Therefore, if we just used our drug concentrations, our graph you can see here looks a little bit dull. There doesn't seem to be any trends going on. Our arrow bars are very large. If we ran statistical analyses on this, like a t-test or we ran an ANOVA, we would notice that there are no differences between any of the data because the variation are too great. However, now we've normalized correctly to each of our data sets. We can clearly see that there are differences in our drug treatments, and we could run the correct statistical analyses on these data sets. So I hope that explains how this kind of normalization, so normalizing to a mean, is often a good way of normalizing your data.